So I've been having some strange issues here with a uh, GFCI circuit breaker. So I'm gonna, that's something I'm gonna try to change out. Uh, one thing, we were talking through a little bit of the, the, the safety they had taken uh, account, into account. Um, might be over a little paranoid, but uh, it's better to take these cautions. Uh, so one of the things is gonna be turning off the everything. This is gonna be a little bit different than when you can turn off a single circuit breaker when you're working on an out or something like that. Um, Make sure you understand as well uh, your, your the manufacturer so that you get the exact uh, right circuit breaker. So in, in, in this case, it's a Square D, um, but you just have to know that their Square D home line, their Square D QO, um, they have plug-on um, so, or neutral, thing, different things like that. I don't have the plug-in neutral here, um, but I'm going to be replacing again with one of these outlets, or sorry, these circuit breakers. It's acting a little strange. Um, so went out and purchased. Uh, so this is the, the one I'm going to be replacing it here with. It's actually a GFCI and also arc fault. So the first thing you need to make sure is uh, electricity is off uh, to it. And I'm actually going to open up and show you. Uh, but you'll, you'll normally have a main circuit breaker up here like this. Uh, that, that you can turn on again if you uh, we're gonna have to turn that off because we're, we're uh, replace a uh, circuit breaker so we don't want any power i'm actually going to go outside and turn off the uh the whole circuit um electricity to it um and i'll have to explain why so I'll just take this off here um, and i'm actually just going to leave it on for the moment uh, just to kind of show you how i'm measuring it but when you're doing it it's good to turn it all everything completely off There's usually a couple screws here. Uh, I like to take off, not take them all off at one time. Uh, I don't like to keep this thing from falling. Um, it helps. Just kind of loosen it here so you can see how it comes off. Support here, so when this last point comes off, it's the way of holding. Okay, so what I was wanted to kind of show you here is, let's just look at. Um, so if you don't, if you don't understand this, you probably shouldn't be in here. Uh, but for example, if you wanted to look at. I'll look up at here the the source voltage or sorry the, the source is coming in I can see yeah I got 120 some and so what this is going to do what this this does is turn it off because I have power down here this whole thing is energized all right so you can see for example let me just take a look here on the uh, across the neutral and to any one of these voltages you can see you got 120 there um, now when I turn off this main breaker What's going to do is turn off all the electricity below that. I just want to make sure you can see. So now we no longer have uh, electricity there. But the key to note is that is turning off everything below. It's not turning off your so your source electricity that, that's coming from you know from outside. So you see, we still have voltage. So touching anything in the top can still get you in trouble here. So that's why uh, you. When you're replacing it, I would, if you have the, if it's, if it's a good way to do it or easy access to it, I would be turning it off at the, uh, the, the source as well. Um, just because you're messing around in here and you're touching and, you know, most of the time you're going to be okay. Uh, but if you can, if you know we're hundred percent sure that everything's correct and whoever did it was correct and there's no faulty, nothing, nothing else faulty anywhere, then maybe you, you feel safe and like the professionals can feel safe. Uh, it's usually just better just turn it all off at the source outside so lucky for me i have a uh a whole house generator here so it's easy to get to the, the service panel you can actually turn this off and have a full you know a whole house utility disconnect so by turning that off i can turn off even the source power into the house and speaking of that if you happen to have a generator like this go ahead and turn make sure that's in the off position as well so it doesn't kick on that's by having it disconnected it's, it wouldn't cause a problem anyways, but just, again, being doubly safe. So leaving that off, it's not going to turn on to its test phase and start generating electricity.
looking at here is number 31, uh, which is right here. So to get these to pop out, it's really that there's they're, they're swiveling on. There's a, a junction point here where they, they they connect and they sit on there. And they can just pull it out and see it, it pops out. This one's actually running uh, as 10 gauge wire because it's. Uh, but you'll you'll notice different than if if you if you've changed any other outlets before. Is that you know most of these are running. Um, you'll just see uh, electric power or the, your hot coming out of this. This is a GFCI, so the neutral uh, comes in. So the, the neutral that act, that's actually goes to the outlet uh, comes in to this, to the, the breaker, and then it goes up to uh, the, the neutral bar up here so that, that that's where it can sense any leaked voltage because uh, it knows what's going out, what's coming in, and it can determine the difference. Uh, if that wasn't in place and it went directly there, it'd have no way to, to monitor that. Um, so there's, Unlike most of these regular breakers, you're going to have, there's going to be two that you need to disconnect. Get off the hot here. This is the main. So you need to just unscrew that and that comes out. Uh, then I said, unlike the other ones, if you, can't, if you can see this, there is uh, another lead here for the neutral to the circuit. And this one needs to come out as well. Look at that. And then you'll see this lead is running up here to the neutral bar up top here. Uh, so let me get that one out as well. All right, so now we can remove this. So this is a little bit more complicated than your, your standard circuit breaker. Um, I like to take a look at this. Just double check, make sure they look the same. The uh, connection, so you can see here's here's where it connects to the uh, the connection point there, and then this is that the actual hot lead. And again, we have a, a pigtail here. This is a standard GFCI, so you'll you'll notice the, the it's a little bit different here. This is a, a standard GFCI, a little bit older ones, uh, where this is one of the the combined uh, it has arc fault as well. So any arc uh, protection or protection against arcing. Okay, so let's just trim off this extra lead we don't need with wire this is just gonna be going into the bus just run this first one the, the neutral lead up here and sometimes it helps to have your uh, needle nose pliers in here to, to pull and kind of finagle it its way in there so I'm gonna put this back into the neutral bar right here there tighten it down See the again the load here is going to be the uh, the, the hot's going to be coming out here. It's it's brass, uh, so you can see that that would be. And here is a the, the white, so the, the neutral here is you can see it's a, a different color. Uh, so the neutral from our source circuit. So again, the is is going to go into this. Uh, which you'll see it marked here as as load. a little tough because I said this is a circuit used for tools so I gave a little bit heftier wire. Alright, get that one in there. Tighten it down. And then the hot is gonna go into the load here on the top. Muscling to get this. All right. All right. Now it's 
place. You gotta get the, the bottom part into the, the outlet or into the edge so that it can rotate and then it snaps in the, in the front. Uh, and you'll notice uh, this one actually didn't come like this, so I'm surprised. Uh, they're normally in a tripped state, so I would turn it to the off position. Uh, just, you know, we're gonna be testing it, so you want it to be off. Make sure there's, there's no problems. Uh, all right, so it's, everything's secure in there. So I'm ready to go turn it back on. Okay, so now it's the service has been turned on outside. You'll notice, actually, double check that. Okay, so I can double check that. Oh, got 240 volts there. Uh, as I mentioned before, you know, that none of this is energized because this is turned off. This is this is all off. But as soon as I switch this over, then the, the it'll energize the whole panel. So it's very hard. Ugh. All right. See my lights coming on. So working so far in the house. Um, just double check. Look at a couple of these. Power here. Zip 120. Uh, this is the new one we just put in. So there, there's there's no voltage to that because I got it turned off, but I like to you know, test it. I'm just gonna switch forward here. So it got solid uh, voltage there. So it's at least working through there. So now I can test the outlet because that was what I really wanted to test out here. And there's a tool I like to test. Uh, I don't have to just test the voltage. Um, I've seen one of these. Is a, this little outlet, it's got some lights on there. You can tell when it's correct. Uh, when you see two lights, it means it's correct. So it's like a success. Uh, and the other thing, nice thing it has is it has a little button on the top of here. You can see there. Uh, so that when you press this, you can actually test the GFCI. So you should be able to hear this when I press it. Um, and I think if you get it all in view here, you should be able to see it as well. If you heard that click, if you see right here, you can see that that tripped off, and if you can see that there's a red light, there's a red thing, then this is in the weird state where it can't actually be turned on, it has to be turned off. So it looks like we got a, a good circuit working here now. You can see the light came back on. It actually has a, a tester as well. If you don't have this, but I like to test it at the source, we can test this to make sure everything's working correctly. You see, same thing, I uh, can't turn it back on because it's been it's in a tripped state. Uh, you can see the light's off coming as well. So. At that point, we got a, a good test. Uh, I'm not seeing the weird uh, voltage drop like I saw before. It was actually dropping to like 117 or so for no reason. So there's probably something wrong uh, with that. So again, be safe when you're. I always like to have positive tests. Like I said, when, if I'm working on circuit, have this on, turn it off, and verify that it's not on before I even start working on it. And not just assume that switching it uh, works.